Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, before we get started, just a moment of silence for Queen Elizabeth, 96 years old, amazing, amazing life. Uh, passed away, um, passed away today, but again, 96 years old. God bless. May all of us uh, have the ability to see um, life as long as she had. Uh, but you know, kind of, you know, kind of uh, surreal. You, it's like you growing up, you always kind of saw her as the the figurehead, right? Like the queen. A lot of people call themselves the queen. A lot of women call themselves the queen. But she was actually the queen. So um, you know, pretty pretty somber moment um, uh, as far as that. So uh, say a little prayer for her. Anyway, um, let's talk about the market. So we've been below uh, the 50-day moving average for eight days. We've been talking about this pretty much on a, on a regular basis that doesn't make a difference how much we're building underneath the 50-day moving average. You're going to have scenarios and days and times that the market is going to rally just because, again, nothing goes straight down. And we've kind of illustrated this uh, ever since we broke the 50-day moving average the first time around that, yes, you're going to have an ultimate uh, a sell bias, but you are going to have two, three days uh, worth of, of buying just because again nothing goes straight down and just the way uh, buyers get tired at the top sellers get tired well I don't want to call it the bottom but uh, on the bottom channels and that's exactly what we've seen on the first move down on the 50-day moving average here's your rallies more lowers here's your rallies more lows here's your rallies and so forth and so on and that's exactly what we're getting this time around as well for now right for now so we've been below uh the 50-day moving average this is day eight tomorrow will be uh day nine so that's two full weeks of losing the 50-day and now building the 50-day uh but what it was it was actually a pretty uh pretty impressive thing what the bulls have done uh the last couple of days uh yesterday we started noticing uh that pre-market even with the futures uh, up a little bit, uh, up a little bit, and then down a little bit. A lot of the prices weren't moving down, and that was kind of a a, a, a big clue. Not because you know we talking about this is the bottom. We don't know where the bottom is. We have no idea where tops or bottoms are trying to predict the future. That's not what it's all about. We're just trying to uh, facilitate the data and kind of drag it into the next trading day. So we, we saw you know some pretty decent stability. And the problem with decent stability is. Even if you get a dead cat bounce, and I've kind of talked about this in nausea, but even when you get a dead cat bounce going into yesterday's session, you knew because we are seven, eight days below the 50 day moving, you're not gonna have any room, right? You're just not gonna have any room. So when you saw yesterday's rally for the first probably two, three hours, right? And then kind of a stagnant, uh, stagnant from, from there on, you kind of saw that, yes, yeah, some stocks were up, and then they came back down. Stocks were up and they came back down. And then you had the Apple event, right? Apple event came, uh, nothing really crazy, right? They had an $800, um, $800 iWatch. They talked about some, you know, some neat features about maybe, a, a, you know, I don't know, what was it? The, the, you know, um, detecting a car accident. I, I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't need a gimmick on my wrist to tell me I've been in a car accident. The fact that my head would go through a windshield would be my first clue, but hey, to each his own. If you want to spend money on that damn thing, you could. But the point was the market did rally yesterday and put in its first close uh, above the five-day moving average, which has got not a huge, huge deal, but at least shows you who potentially has control over the shortest term sentiment. Again, it's, we, if you've been watching this broadcast for any amount of years or any amount of months, you kind of know how important the five day is. So it was really, really important for the bulls to kind of reclaim yesterday's channel. So we opened lower today. If you guys remember, uh, the queues were down, you know, $3, nearly three bucks today uh, at the open. And there was um, some testimony, whatever the hell it was, from uh, the Fed chairman and, you know, went, went up and went down, went up, went down. And we wanted just to make sure that we wanted to give the bulls at least the, the, the at least the, some sort of benefit of the doubt today, just because we did reclaim the five day moving average. And that's exactly what happened today. Kudos to the bulls. Not only did they reclaim yesterday's channels, they had a pretty decent run into this 10 day moving average, which got stopped 
right into supply, which was, again, that's kind of the whole point. You see here, the last time we went into the 10-day moving average, we got stuffed as well. The only difference between today and the last time we got stuffed in the 10-day moving average, and again, keep this in mind, this is all happening below the 50-day moving average. This was a pretty volatile session. So usually I wouldn't, you know, kind of illustrate anything on the five minute channel, but the 60 minute chart really doesn't do its justice. So if you look at the five minute view, right, this is the five minute view of today's action, right? So we gapped out, we had a big, big gap down, Qs were down three bucks at the open. Then they reclaimed yesterday's channels and rallied all the way up to the 10 day moving average, only to get faded off that 10 day moving average getting just absolutely annihilated at, at, the, at lunchtime. Literally, the queues went from 302 to about 297. This is all within one hour, only to, to, to hold the bottom channel, start rallying up again, and now putting in its highest move, right? Putting in its highest move in this whole channel here. So that's a crazy day, right? You know, people talk about, you know, you want excitement? There's your excitement, right? It's a little bit too much excitement for my blood, but the point is, again, you're not trading the whole day trying to figure out the closing price. You're just trying to figure out where is your safest interval. Uh, obviously, preferably, it's going to be in, in the morning, that morning session is from 9.30 to about 1 o'clock. And then you kind of want to get out the way because channels, again, will contract. You'll have some spin cycle news come out of left field. You get some headlines from the Fed, from, uh, from, from our government, from anything ac across that you could possibly think of. And things become very, very aggressive. We don't want that. So I'm usually kind of done uh, prior to that 1 o'clock channel. So the good thing that we saw that was different between uh, today's fade uh, off the 10 day versus this fade, this fade never recovered, right? This fade never recovered and ultimately caused technical damage below the 50 day moving average. This fade did, right? This fade, uh, and again, kind of show you from the, from the channel here, this fade did, got all the way down, had a $5 move and then recovered almost to the point that we're a dollar away or less than a dollar away uh, from today's highs, which kind of brings it into a very interesting point going into tomorrow's session. Now, again, if we're looking at the big picture, and this is kind of what we talk about macro, directional bias, we all know that for us to go buy bias, I'm talking about risk on, putting on inventory, putting on uh, overnights, we're gonna need to get above the 50 day moving average. Because the last time, again, for all you guys who are joining us here uh, that are new, the last time we reclaimed the 50 day moving average started a risk on cycle that lasted for a month. Again, didn't go straight up, the same way this sell off is not going straight down but it had a really, really big run for a month. So that's kind of where we are. So we know for us to get buy biased, okay, and start putting on risk again on the overnights, we're, need, we're gonna need to reclaim the 50-day moving average. We're not there yet, right? The 50-day moving average as of today is roughly around the 306 level. So for the bulls to feel at least pretty good about themselves going into uh, the Christmas, right? The Christmas season, we're going to need to reclaim the 50 day moving average at 306. We're not there, right? Our first job or their first job, again, for us, we, you know, we trade both sides of the market, doesn't make a difference. But for the bulls job for tomorrow or sometime in the next couple of days, don't give this back, right? Don't give this back. Um, start reclaiming above today's highs which is 302, right? If they could reclaim off of 302, then we got measured potential move, possibly even for tomorrow, into this 304 and a half level, and then ultimately trying to test uh, this 50 day supply again at this 306. Is it possible? Is it not possible? We don't need, we don't know to be determined, but at least we know our levels, right? We absolutely know our levels. The, the only problem is, and this is kind of the whole point of this, of understanding technical analysis, we've seen multiple rallies, right? We've seen multiple rallies several times within the last bear market cycle below the 50 day moving average. And as of, as impressive they were for two, three, maybe even four days, they gave it right back shortly after. And that's such a very important point to understand. We don't know, right? We don't know if this is the bottom of the range. We don't know. We Again, like we said, we only take everything day by day. You know, we're not trying to figure out where Apple is going to close October the 38th. I'm obviously joking, but I'm not. Everybody knows there's only 37 days in October. But the point is we're trying to get the data that the research is giving us on a closing basis and trade from a practical point of view the next day. So example, I know for example, for tomorrow, if there is a rally and we get rejected once again off today's highs and we don't reclaim today's highs, that is going to be a red flag. 
it's gonna be a red flag in an overall sell signal environment. But if the bulls do come around, right, and start reclaiming that 302 level, which is the high from today's session, and reclaim the 10-day moving average for all you guys who've been watching the workshops and whatever the case may be, you know that I re, I call the 10-day moving average the birth of the trade. That's just the birth of the trade short-term indicator that if that level is confirmed, and today you can see it got rejected, if that level can con con turn, uh, confirm, then we can continue to the next supply zone, which will be roughly 304.5, followed by 306 do or die level on the 50-day moving average. But before we put the cart in front of the horse, again, baby steps, right? Absolutely baby steps. So yeah, tomorrow is gonna be kind of uh, important for the bulls. Uh, the last thing the bulls need or want or desire is for the cues to lose to today's channels on the bottom, right? If we start losing uh, by back that 295 level on a close for tomorrow, let's just say we gap them and get rejected. If we start losing back uh, below that 295 level on a close, well, then that means the bears will reclaim back the five-day moving average. And then next week, we will start looking at lower prices just the same way stocks work on, on the opposite side of the range. Whatever gets confirmed first, that's the directional bias that the next day uh, will take place. So yeah, I think tomorrow is kind of an important day for the bulls to see if they can prolong uh, the rally. The bears job for tomorrow is to reject them at the 10-day moving average again and start confirming today's lows of roughly 295 for a destination back to uh, this week's lows of 291. We'll see, right? So the upside 302 to the downside uh, 295 macro. And if you look at a lot of trade, uh, if you look at a lot of trades today, uh, especially from the technology space, again, it, it, I, I, I did it very, I, I, I did it for a reason that I, I didn't want to put in a lot of pivots today, right? Because I, I, I thought about it this way and I said to myself, well, what's the point of putting on, putting 10, 12 pivots, right, on, on everybody to watch? Today was either going to be a scenario that either everything was going to reclaim, right? Either the cues were going to reclaim and pull everything up or everything is going to get rejected and go down. So I literally put the cues, Tesla, Snow, again, Snow has been a big, big runner, NVIDIA coming off the bottom and AMD had a really nice bottom looking chart uh, as well. Cause I figured, look, one goes, they all go. And that's kind of exactly what happened today. Ironically, what led the rally up yesterday was Apple. And guess what? For, for the, the darnest reason today, it was actually the lagger down on the day. So go figure, right? Go figure. But again, it really does speak to the strength of the bulls today. They got rejected off the 10-day moving average, and yet they recovered. Ugly as it was, uh, $5 sell-off after that fade, but they recovered and they closed literally a dollar away uh, from today's channel that will be super important today. So again, only four, uh, only four pivots today. Qs are really good. Tesla were really good. Snow was really good. Nvidia was okay, and AMD was an absolute monster. I'm sure there was other names uh, that were very, very strong. But again, we wanted to make sure we were looking at the market the right way and not bombarding everybody with 200 different stocks. Because again, at the end of the day, remember, if you watch everything you're going to miss everything. And the most important part is every single day, look at the stocks that you wanna trade, look at the stocks that you wanna watch, and the most important part is trade it with a lot of confidence because technicals are telling you it's a green or red light, not because your opinion uh, or emotion. So let's talk about this. Uh, QQQ needs to confirm uh, yesterday's channel, 300 for a potential 303 move. For the ETF lovers, here's the 300, right? And beautiful push, I mean, really, really beautiful push. Uh, once the Q's got above that 300 level, and you can see here, right? Once the Q's got above that 300 level, really, really big move. It stopped literally 15, 20 cents away uh, from the ultimate, ultimate supply on the 10 day uh, moving average on the Q's, but a $2 move on a, you know, nice move, really, really nice move on the Q's. Again, uh, we know the importance tomorrow. Uh, Tesla, 284 and 285.50 needs to confirm for a 288, 290 potential build if the market continues today. And that's exactly what Tesla did. It, you know, it took out 84, which was yesterday's channel, took out 85.30, which was the high, the three, the three areas where it got rejected pre-market over here, and it stopped right at 290. Again, if it confirms today's action tomorrow, is it possible Tesla gets 293, 295. If the market gets one more day, hey, why not, right? Why not? So we're definitely gonna keep an eye on that as well. Snow continues to be a monster. Uh, 7850, 79 uh, needs to build. Here was snow, right? Here was snow. So it took out this whole channel here, the 79 
uh, this 179 area traded in the next supply zone uh, to 182. It would need to get above that 182.5, 183 for po next possible move to 187. But at least for today, a uh, nice little push there as well. Uh, NVIDIA, nice push, right? Uh, 134.40s needs to build. There's a little bit of supply, 138.80s. Uh, so it needs to build 139. It put in a move into the 140 area. Uh, it's going to need to. It's going to need to get above today's channel. You can see this linear regression line here. It's going to need to uh, pretty much build over 140 tomorrow for a potential move to that 141.70. And if the market stretches out more, uh, 43.80s. And this is definitely the biggest move of the day. Uh, AMD 81 needs to build. Man, what a rock star today right what an absolute rock star so amd took out this channel took out this channel the high here is eighty dollars and 89 cents started building at 81 and just absolutely exploded to 83.45 for this thing to continue it's going to really need to get get above that 83.70 84 area for another potential move to uh 85.20s which is kind of correlated to the 10-day uh moving average as well so that's it guys that's it uh today is thursday tomorrow is friday Tonight is opening night of the NFL. Super duper excited. First half of the game, I will be at my daughter's soccer game. Again, priorities. Thank God for cell phones. You can watch stuff everywhere now. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Hope everybody's safe, happy, and sound, and healthy. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take